Dennis Robin finishing up his uh, final warm-up tosses. The umpires tonight, Gary Newdecker behind the plate, George Maloney at first, Dallas Park second, and Mike Riley at third. Uh, Bruce has a couple of more tosses, so we'll pause now for station identification. This is the Detroit Tiger Baseball Network. And this is WJR Detroit. The weather tonight becoming cloudy with scattered showers and possible thunder showers. Low in the mid-60s. Variably cloudy. A few morning showers tomorrow and a high 76 to 79. At 3 past 8, it's mostly sunny and 80 degrees. Well, the Tigers will be facing a right-hander tonight, Rick Langford, who has uh, turned in 12 straight complete games, setting a club record for the A's. And in his last outing, he went all 14 innings in a 6-5 Oakland victory. The reason being is that he had pitched so well with the first nine innings of WMAQ, Chicago. WMAQ. Your radio station brings you Chicago White Sox Baseball. At Sadisky Park in Chicago, Illinois, it's White Sox Baseball. White Sox Baseball brought to you today by True Value Hardware Stores. It's not just a name. It's their way of doing business. By the 1978 Chevy trucks built to stay tough. By Strohs, from one beer lover to another, Strohs. By Relo Real Estate and your Relo members in the greater Chicagoland area. By Champion Smart Plug. No matter what you drive, Champions will give you better mileage. By Household Finance Corporation, where people use their money to get the most out of life. By Zenith, building quality home entertainment products for 60 years. By Clarklift of Chicago, with five locations in the greater Chicago area. And by the Association of Chicagoland McDonald's Restaurants. Have breakfast at McDonald's. Hi, and good afternoon, everybody. Lauren Brown, along with Harry Carey and Jimmy Pearsall, as the Chicago White Sox attempt to snap a four-game losing streak here this afternoon and salvage one game out of this three-game set with the Eastern Division Detroit Tigers, and will send Wilbur Wood to the mound, the left-hander, to face relative newcomer Jack Morris, who made his Major League debut in relief against the White Sox a year ago. The White Sox have dropped four in a row, eight of their last nine. They've been in a slump that really has not produced many sustained drives at the plate, and the opposition seems to do everything right. Everything seems to go the other way for the White Sox. So today, the White Sox will try to get that worm to turn, so to speak, and get back on the winning track. The Tigers, meanwhile, playing great baseball. They have won seven of their last eight. They are in first place in the Eastern Division of the American League with a one-game lead over the Boston Red Sox. The Tigers have won 11 and lost three. You know, the thing in this eight games that the White Sox have lost in their last nine, six of those eight losses have been against the New York Yankees and the Detroit Tigers, two teams that, since I've been with the White Sox the last three seasons, have seemed to just continually give the White Sox fits, both New York and Detroit. But Wilbur Wood will try to snap the White Sox out of it today. Hopefully the bats will be booming, and we'll be back with the starting lineup in just a minute. Six. second and play second. Rusty Staub hitting third, the designated hitter. Jason Thompson batting cleanup at first base. Steve Kemp in left field batting fifth. Charlie Spikes in right field batting sixth. Lance Parrish behind the plate and batting seventh. Aridio Rodriguez will be at third base batting eighth. And Mark Wagner, the shortstop, batting in the ninth spot. On the mound, rookie Jack Morris. He has won none and he has lost none this year. He still is considered a rookie. He didn't get that many games in last year to uh, not qualify 
qualify for rookie status. A year ago, he won one and lost one, did not have a record against the White Sox. For the White Sox, a big change in their lineup today. Center fielder Chet Lemon, who had been moved in the number three spot in the lineup after starting the season in the sixth spot and then going to the second spot and then moving into the number three spot, has now been moved back to the number six spot in the lineup. We'll talk about that in just a moment, but here's the rundown of the White Sox lineup. Ralph Gar leading it off in left field. Bob Molinaro batting second as the designated hitter. George Orta will hit third and be at second base. Bobby Bonds batting cleanup in right field. Lamar Johnson will hit fifth, and he'll be at first base. Chet Lemon down to the number six spot in center field. Eric Soderholm batting in the seventh spot at third base. Bill Naharadny doing the catching and batting eighth. And Greg Pryor at shortstop batting ninth. On the mound, Wilbur Wood. He has won none and lost three this year. He was 0-2 a year ago against the Tigers. And he is 12-14 and against Detroit Lifetime. LaFleur the batter. He has really been a thorn in the White Sox side in the three games the two clubs have played this year. He's hitting 339 overall with three homers and nine RBIs and takes a knuckleball low. LaFleur has four RBIs against the White Sox and five hits at 12 times up. But the important factor is his on-base percentage. Here's a pitch inside of all. He has been up against the White Sox 15 times those 15 times, he's gotten on base 11 times, and six of those times he has come around to score. That's where you look at the value of a player, and here's a pitch high, ball three. And of those six times that he has scored, he has scored the winning run twice and the go-ahead run the other time. Here's the 3-0 pitch. He walked him on four straight pitches. So the four in 16 times up against the White Sox has been on base 12 times. The leadoff walks were what hurt the White Sox last night. And the batter is Steve Dillard hitting an even 200 with no homers and two RBIs. The outfield playing him around to the left. LaFleur stole a couple of bases last night for the Tigers against the White Sox. Left-hander delivers. Here's the pitch and it's a strike. Tosses over to first, the runner back. Young Jack Morris down to the bullpen. Has stopped warming up. Looking at the action, now he's going to toss a couple of more pitches before coming in to pitch the first inning. Wilbur ready. Here's the pitchers. A swing and a bouncer to Pryor. He's got it. Throws on to first to get him. And why he didn't go to second to get the speedy Ron LaFleur, I don't know. He was just about two feet off a second. Juggled the ball momentarily, but still had a chance just to take a step to his left and tag LaFleur. So a mental error on the part of Pryor puts a runner in scoring position with one out as Dillard is out 6-3. to three. And the batter is Rusty Staub. Staub has had a big bat against the White Sox. 5 for 14, 2 homers and 7 RBIs. A grand slammer and a 3-run homer three-run homer, putting icing on the cake last night. Here's the pitch to him, a swing and a grounder up the middle. Pryor has it, holds the runner at second and throws Staub out. Pryor had him play perfectly near second. And there's two down with a runner at second. The batter is Jason Thompson. 316 hitter with three homers and eight RBIs. Thompson, normally a real thorn in the White Sox side, but in three games, the White Sox have stopped him in two of the three. Went hitless at Detroit last week and was 0 for 5 last night. Got a couple of hits here in the opener of the series two nights ago. So a runner at second, two down. The outfield playing him deep and around to the right. They give him a lot of room down the left field line and into left center. Wilbur Wood out of the stretch. Here's the pitch. Here's a swing and a grounder to second. Orta floats it. Here comes the runner around third. He'll score, and it's a one to nothing ball game. Here goes Thompson, headed for second. The throw, not in time, and he slides in safely. Why, and allowing that runner to get into scoring position hurts as the Tigers bring that leadoff man around again. Orta was.
was playing at the edge of the outfield grass had all the time in the world. But it's an error, and Thompson winds up at second, and the Tigers are out in front, one to nothing. And the batter is Steve Kemp, hitting 364, a homer and eight RBIs. Lamar Johnson's at first this afternoon, Horta at second, Pryor at short, and Sauter home at third, with Naharotney doing the catching. Left-hander ready. Have a pitch. And it's a strike. Outfield of Ralph Gar in left, Chet Lemon in center, and Bobby Bonds in right. Though there was an error, the run still should not have scored had the force out been made of the runner coming down with nobody out. Here's the pitch, and it's inside of all. Evens the count up at one and one. Steve Kemp got a big triple in that ninth inning. And then tied it up, coming home on a pass ball. Left-hander ready. Here's the 1-1 delivery. Checked his swing, but it's a strike. He's in the hole, one ball and two strikes. White Sox falling behind here, one to nothing on an unearned run as they did last night. Wilbur Wood is ready. Here's the pitch, and it just missed on the inside part of the plate. Evens up the count of two and two. Kopecky and a Stroh's group out of the bullpen today, hoping the White Sox can snap out of it. Left-hander delivers. Here's the pitchers. A swing and a pop-up. Left side, Pryor backpedaling on the outfield grass. The White Sox shortstop is there and takes it, and that retires the side. But in the inning, one run on no hits and one air, just like last night's first inning, and one man left on. So we're at the end of a half inning of play. It's the Tigers won, the White Sox coming to bat. Hurry into your Zenith dealer right now during Zenith's carousel of values. You'll find sensational prices on Zenith home entertainment products. See your dealer's special selection of new 25-inch diagonal Zenith Chroma Color 2 console TVs. Outstandingly priced at only $598.88 and available in your choice of three fine furniture styles. Or ask to see the new 19-inch diagonal Chroma Color 2 TVs that provide outstanding dependability and performance. Prices start at only $378.88 and that is a value. You'll find similar values on Zenith black and white TVs quality Zenith radios, and the famous Zenith Allegro stereo systems that feature exclusive Allegro tune port speakers for clear, rich, natural sound. So stop in today, see and hear your Zenith dealer's complete line of Zenith quality home entertainment products. You'll find values galore during the Zenith carousel of values right now at your Zenith dealer. Prices quoted are distributor-suggested retail prices. Warren Brown back at Comiskey Park is young Jack Morris, a right-hander, Gets in his warm-up tosses, 6'3", 190-pounder, only 22 years old. Making his second start of the year, he is without a record. Earned run average of 6.23. A year ago, he won one and lost one, beating Milwaukee and losing to Seattle. With an earned run average of 3.74. He made his major league debut against the White Sox in relief, won four innings. Did not allow a run and was not involved in the decision. Basically, a fastball changeup pitcher. Has a decent slider, but his fastball and his changeup are his most effective pitches. Does not have a curveball. This is his second start of the year. He had some arm problems in spring training, did not accompany the cup. The team from Florida. He went to Evansville. Then he remained in Lakeland and was recalled on April 17th. He started against Texas last Saturday when Mark Pittrich could not get loose after an extensive warm-up period. As the last-minute replacement, he went four and a third innings, allowed three runs on three hits, walked five, and struck out three, but was not the pitcher of the record. As the Tigers came from behind to win it in ten innings, seven to six with John Hiller getting the win. It was the last July 26th here that Morris made his major league debut. This is his only career outing against the White Sox. He's from St. Paul, Minnesota. game and go to Seattle where they'll have the day off in the Northwest tomorrow before opening up a series out there. Then they go down to Anaheim and then to Oakland. Well, the White Sox host the Baltimore Orioles this weekend. Ralph Gar leads it off. Ralph hitting 265, two homers and four RBIs. 
And it's a foul out in front of the plate that goes fair. And the umpire behind the plate, Derwood Merrill, says it's a foul ball all the way. Gar has been in a bit of a slump. Two hits in his last 23 times at bat. into the windup and the one strike pitchers a swing and a shot into left center LaFleur coming over he's there and he's got it and there's one out LaFleur got a good jump on the ball and hauls it in in left center field for the first out of the inning and the batter is Bob Molinaro he's been up seven times against the Tigers with four hits two of them triples and he has driven in a run against his former teammates he only retired him once last night he got on base four times and five trips to the plate Arrow hitting an even 400 with an RBI for the year. But moved up to the number two spot in the lineup. Chet Lemon, as we told you, has been moved back to the number six spot. Lemon started out like a house of fire the first day they put him in the number three slot. He went three for four in his first four times up, including a home run and three RBIs. But since then, he went one for 18. Right-hander in the windup. Here's the 1-0 pitch, and it's low a ball. Bob Lemon said, well, at first outing, maybe he didn't have time to think about it. But apparently, the White Sox feel that it's been on Lemon's mind and that he's pressing. And that one for 18 has moved him back to the sixth spot. And a fastball for a strike with George Orton becoming the number three hitter. Two balls and a strike to Molinaro. Outfield plays it deep and around to the right. The wind's coming out of the north again today. Here's the pitch, low a ball, three and one. Coming over the left field wall. Actually, as we look out at it, it looks more like it's a northeasterly wind off the lake at 15 miles an hour. 49 degrees at the lake, 58 at midway. So we add the two and round it out by dividing it by two. Here's the three one pitch. Outside, caught the corner for a strike, three and two. Molinero was ready to go to first, so. I figure it's about 54 degrees here at Comiskey Park on a sunny afternoon. Tigers out in front, one to nothing. We're at the bottom of the first. White Sox trying to snap a four-game losing streak. Here's the 3-2 pitch. Swinging a grounder up the middle. Shortstop over to his left has it, and he throws him out. Wagner was playing practically behind second base on the shift with a left-handed hitter, and he got it just to the right of second and throws him out for the second out of the batter is George Orta. Porta hitting 293 with three homers and nine RBIs. Now becomes the number three hitter for the White Sox. Tigers defensively with Jason Thompson at first base, Steve Dillard at second, Mark Wagner at short, and Aurelio Rodriguez over at third. Lance Parrish doing the catching, and the pitch inside hit him. A fastball hits Orta. The White Sox have a runner at first with two out. Now the batter is Bobby Bonds. Bonds hitting 288 with a homer and four RBIs. Steve Kemp in left field for the Tigers today. Ron LaFleur in center. And Charlie Spikes out in right. So the tying runs at first base. Vinny Minoso talking to Orta, limping. Beyond the first base back, now he's ready. Tigers really shipped around for Bobby Bonds, the second baseman Diller. Almost in straightaway center field, about 10 feet away from Beats, right behind second base. Here's the pitch to Bobby. Here's the swing and a long drive. LaFleur going back, down with the sunglasses, the wind holding it up. And he's got it about five feet in front of the warning track, just a shade into left center field. Now Bobby gave that a ride, but right into the teeth of that wind. And that retires the side. No runs, no hits, no errors. One man left on. We're at the end of one complete inning of play here at Comiskey Park. The Tigers won. The White Sox, nothing. Don't miss Chevrolet 72 hour Celadon with all those good Chevy values like Monte Carlo, Malibu, Caprice, Honda, Tough Chevy pickups and vans. It lasts three days only, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, April 26th, 27th, and 28th, at participating Chevrolet dealers from coast to coast. Chevy's out to sell thousands of cars and trucks during this special event. So come on in during the giant Chevy 72-hour celebration. Put a brand new Chevy in your life. It's a giant Chevy celebration.
Well, you Jack's a south sider, too. I'm not maybe the west side, but Jack is a Chicagoan, been in the Cardinal organization his entire career. Is the interim manager. Here's the pitchers a swing and a fly ball to right. Bobby Bonds is there, drifts back, hauls it in, and that retires the side of the second. No runs, one hit, one man left on. So we go to the bottom half of the second inning. It's Detroit one, the White Sox nothing. Have we got fire for you when you list your house with us? Have we got fire for you? We're a company you can trust. to sell your home, your nearby Relo member has the buyers you want, both in this area and moving here from out of town. And if you're relocating, he can put you in touch with a Relo member where you're moving. There are over 135 Relo offices in Chicagoland, such as FC Pilgrim Company, serving Oak Park, River Forest, Forest Park, and adjoining suburbs. And there's Percy W. Company Company, serving the southwest suburbs with integrity since 1952. We're part of Relo. So you should your house with us. second Tigers out in front here one to nothing this program is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Chicago White Sox solely for the entertainment of our audience any rebroadcast or other use of this play-by-play -play description and the account of this game without the express written consent of the Chicago White Sox is prohibited Harry Carey Jimmy Pearsall and I are employees of and are paid by WMAQ radio for our play-by-play -play descriptions and accounts of these games WMAQ and the Chicago White Sox share mutual rights of announcer approval Lamar Johnson will lead it off here against Jack Morris as we go to the bottom half of the second inning. Tigers out in front on an unearned run, one to nothing. Lamar trying to snap out of his slump, one hit in his last 12 times at bat, looks at a ball outside. He'll be followed by Chet Lemon and Eric Soderholm. White Sox trying to snap a four-game losing streak and in so doing, trying to beat the Tigers for the first time this year. Right-hander in the windup. Here's the pitcher swing and a miss on a fastball. A year ago, the White Sox and the Tigers played ten times. The White Sox won one game against Detroit in this ballpark. They lost four to Detroit here. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Change up for a strike in the outside corner. At Detroit, the White Sox won three and lost two, but... Here at Comiskey Park, they won only one out of five. Detroit has, for some reason, really been a tough club for the White Sox these last two years. Here's a swing and a foul, and now three years into this year, as have been the Yankees. Yankees, well, between the Tigers and the Yankees a year ago, White Sox lost 13 games. This year, the White Sox have already lost six to the two teams. Here's the pitch, a swing and a foul back to the screen. Not won a game against either New York or Detroit, losing three against each. One ball and two strikes to the leadoff man. Outfield playing him straight away. LaFleur shaded just a hair into left center. Here's the one-two pitch. Swing and a grounder foul to the right side. Vinny Minoso comes in to get it. The White Sox this year in their 15th ball game, and this is their 13th day game. Right hand, you're ready. Here's the 1 2 pitch. Low a ball, 2 and 2. White Sox have won 5 and lost 7 in the daytime in their previous 12 games. A year ago, they were right at the 500 mark in the afternoon, 36 36. Here's the 2 2 pitch. Low and away a ball. So the count goes full to Lamar Johnson. Two strikes. They 
Fantastic right-handed hitting first baseman. Morris into the windup. Let's see what he gives him on a full count delivery. A fastball that Lamar fouls back to the screen. Well, if you didn't hear the outcome of that doubleheader at Oakland, it didn't get over, by the way, until 3 o'clock Chicago time. How do you know? Well, stayed up listening to it. In fact, they were within two minutes of the curfew out on the West Coast. Here's the 3-2 pitch. Swing and a base hit up the middle. So the White Sox get their leadoff man on in the first hit of the afternoon for the Sox as Lamar Johnson singles right up the middle. And the batter is Chet Lemon. Lemon hitting 321 with a homer and seven RBIs. Chet has been moved back into the number six spot. Apparently a little too much pressure in that third slot. He was four for 22 as the third hitter and one for his last 18. So manager Bob Lemon has elected to put him back in that sixth spot and take some of the pressure off of him. Maybe he'll be a little more relaxed. Here's the pitch to him. And it's a bunt right out in front of the plate. Pitcher has it. His only play is at first, and he got it. Morris got it, looked to second, but elected to throw on to first, and the sacrifice is successful. Going from one to three, Lamar Johnson taking second. And that was only the third sacrifice hit that the White Sox have had this year. Eric Sauter home the batter. Eric hitting 222, two homers, and seven RBIs. Tigers have really eaten Eric up. One hit ten times to the plate this year. Has an RBI and a sacrifice fly and takes a big cut and swings and misses. But Oakland last night, at two minutes before three Chicago time, and runners at second and third and two out at Delonay, who just Came over to the A's a couple weeks ago for the Pirates. Here's the one-strike pitch. Call strike in the outside corner with a slider. Got a base hit and won the ball game. Joe Coleman got the win, making his first appearance of the year in relief. Pitched only one inning and got the victory. And Oakland won the second game, 4-3 to three in 14 innings after winning the opener, 5-3. to three. Here's the pitch. Here's a swing and a base hit to left. Here comes Lamar Johnson around third. He'll score. White Sox tie it up. The Sutter home. Comes through with a single. Ah, that's what you like to see. The base hit, the sacrifice, and then boom. Take advantage of it and bring him home. And Sutter home. Drives in his eighth run of the year, his second against the Tigers. And we're all tied up at Comiskey Park as Bill Naharadney steps up. Detroit product from Hamtramck. How could he be from Detroit and have traffic? Well, I guess it's like being from Chicago and uh, Blue Island. Right-hander ready. Out of the stretch, delivers. And it's up high off the catcher's mid Sonner home will go to second. Way high, and Parrish, a big kid, could not come up with it. And we wait for the official scorer's decision. It'll be a pass ball on Parrish. According to the official score, he thought he should have handled it. Parrish is a big kid. He goes 6-3. He just didn't get up in time. Went off the top of his mitt. The White Sox have a runner at second with one out. Here's the 1-0 pitch to Naharadni. A swing and a grounder foul in front of Coach Bobby Kanab at third. And the count evens up at 1-1. One one. So Oakland, by winning that doubleheader last night, has now won seven in a row and 12 of their last 13. Minnesota, on the other hand, has lost eight straight. They're going again today. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch. Here's a swing and a fly ball to short right field. Spikes is there. He waits, and he has it. Soderholm tags up but comes back after taking his step, and there are two out. Two down now, and Greg Pryor, the batter, the White Sox shortstop, one hit at seven times to the plate this year. That game today, Oakland going for their eighth in a row, will send Marty Keogh to the mound against Springfield product Roger Erickson. Other games, Boston's at Milwaukee, Torres against Caldwell, Toronto will be at Kansas City tonight, Cleveland at Texas tonight, the Minnesota-Oakland games tonight, and Seattle at California tonight. Those are the only games scheduled. Yankees and Baltimore with the day off. Or 
Orioles will be coming in here on Friday night. Here's the pitch to Pryor. Swing and a miss. Like he gave him a changeup. And he's in the hole 0-1. The National League. St. Louis at Montreal. That's an afternoon game. And the Expos are leading the Cardinals. And new interim manager Jack Kroll 2-1 to one in the third. Here's the pitch outside of all. Later tonight, the Cubs are at Philadelphia, San Francisco at Atlanta, Pittsburgh at New York, the Dodgers at Cincinnati, Rao going against Seaver, who is yet to win a ball game, and San Diego at Houston. One ball, one strike. Right-hander ready, here's the pitch, and it's a strike in the inside part of the plate. One and two to count. So Jack Crowell managing his first big league game for the St. Louis Cardinals. Hand, you ready? The one-two pitch. Low and inside a ball. Crow was the manager at Tulsa in 1973, and his AAA club beat the White Sox AAA club four games to three to win the American Association title that year. He's been managing quite a bit of the Cardinal chain. Here's the pitch. Swing and a grounder. The shortstop. Wagner's got it. Throws across in time, and that retires the side here in the second. But the White Sox come back with one run on two hits. There were no errors, and one man left on. We're at the end of two here at Comiskey Park. The White Sox won, the Tigers won. Sit in the shadows of some of baseball's all-time greats. Eddie Walsh, Red Faber, Ted Lyons, Billy Pierce, and many others, where you and your bit of a group share the bullpen at Comiskey Park. It's old yet new because it's a never-before area that was off-limits to all except mound greats. Now you can share their bench in a unique way to see the Sox with your friends. The exclusive bullpen is available for booking now. But hurry, the word is out and reservations are going fast. Call 924-1000 and ask for Danny to make your reservations for the bullpen at Chemiskey Park. WMAQ. We're new red and white. WMAQ is going to make me rich bumper stickers. Could be worth thousands of dollars in cash and prizes to you. We have over $200,000 in cash and prizes, and we're giving it all away. For a chance to be a winner, pick up your free red and white WMAQ bumper sticker from any participating True Value Hardware Store in the greater Chicago area and stick it on your car's rear bumper. If the Q-Truck stops you, you win. It's that easy. Stick it and win with WMAQ. Lauren Brown back at Comiskey Park as we go to the tied up here. The White Sox won and the Tigers won. Milwaukee game is not an afternoon game today. That'll be a 6 o'clock start up in Milwaukee. Now the Red Sox have been playing good ball of late. They're only a game behind the Tigers. Ron LaFleur leads it off. He's gotten on in a walk, and you know it came around to score. He's been up 16 times and on base 12 of them against the White Sox this year, and he takes the ball. LaFleur walked to second on a fielder's choice and came around on an air. Should really have been forced out at second on that the play and Tigers would not have scored. Here's the pitch and it's inside a ball. Wilbur Wood facing Ron LaFleur. Two years ago, Wilbur had a two-hitter going, both hits by LaFleur. And on his third time up, LaFleur hit a shot off Wilbur's knee directly behind the bag at second, and he throws LaFleur off. And it's good to see him off the base path. He's been on base 12 times against the White Sox and scored seven of them. So there's one out at second baseman Steve Dillard, the batter. Well, we're sorry to report that White Sox longtime trainer Charlie Sass, mother passed away in Wheeling, West Virginia, died last night. Here's a swing and a pop-up. Lamar Johnson coming down the line at first, moves into foul territory and takes it there. Two down as Dillard goes after the first pitch. And the batter will be Rusty Staub. A funeral mass for Mrs. Sad will be held Friday at St. Alphonse Church in Wheeling, West Virginia. So our condolences to Charlie on the death of his mom. Tom Wilkinson, the Bears assistant trainer, has been filling in this week for Charlie and doing a good job. Here's a pitch low of all to stop. Stop grounded out to short his first time up. A product of New Orleans, Louisiana. There's the 1-0 pitch. 
Addis a strike. Makes his home in New York as a restaurant in Manhattan. Outfield plays it deep and around to the right. There's a pair of gloves. Chokes up a lot. Takes a pitch inside a ball. Two balls and a strike. Jim Rice had the best year of any designated hitter in the American League last season. And Rusty was right behind him. Here's the 2-1 delivery. Swing and a miss on the knuckleball.
So there's two down, and George Orr to the batter, hit by a pitch his first time up. You're in tune with WMAQ Radio in Chicago, where you will hear White Sox baseball, home and away, night and day, all year long, on the 670 spot on your dial. Here's the first pitch, high and away a ball. So we remind you to keep your socks on, WMAQ. White Sox trying to snap out of a two-week slump. Here's a swing and a fly ball to the right. Spikes coming over near the line, now with the sunglasses, and he takes it in fair territory, about a foot away from the foul line, to retire the side. So the White Sox are down in order. One, two, three, here in the third. We're at the end of three. I'm Lauren Brown, Harry Carey, and Jimmy Pearsall will be over in a minute. It's the White Sox. One, the Tigers one. True Value Hardware Stores would like you and your family to make fun of their West Point bicycles. A lot of people think that a bicycle is a great means of transportation because it's economical. Others think that it's an excellent form of exercise. But True Value Hardware Stores want you to ride their West Point bikes to have fun. So they offer a large selection of sizes and styles to suit every member of your family, including 10-speed racers, high-risers, and a convertible bike for beginners, plus West Point motocross bikes and three-speed touring bikes. So even if you and your family want to use your West Point bikes for exercise or transportation, don't forget, there are a lot of fun. Inside. Fastball. 
has a little note I have I forgot last night. Ron Schuler's daughter, Carrie Schuler, celebrated her third birthday last night. Here's a pitch. Fall back. back here. And it's really being booed. Mike Steffi celebrating his 14th birthday. He's from Wak Wakanda. <laughs> Wilbur Wood rubbing up the baseball. Louis Kennedy, just two years old, watching his first game. Cardinals are leading Montreal 2 to nothing. Here's a pitch low and inside. Bob Scott, Sick Creeble, Tom Kubat, and Porky Washburn from the Journey and Courier in Lafayette, Indiana are here. Here's a knuckler high, ball three. Three balls, two strikes. Left hand hitter waiting. Ball game in the fourth. Now the pitch, here it is. Bouncing ball ought to be easy for Orta. He's got it over the first of the out. Two up, two down. Wood has allowed only one hit, not by Parrish. Orta came close to booting that ball. He got himself again the wrong foot out in front. I guess George is more accustomed to playing night baseball. They don't play day baseball in Mexico. He's been playing so well, you know. When George is bad, he has a lot of trouble. Here's the pitch now, and Spikes, Charlie Spikes, have a cut. Perfect baseball name, is it, Spikes? One strike and nothing. Now the pitch swung on, a line drive in the center field, a base hit. Spike singles sharply to center, and that will bring up Lance Parrish, the catcher, who singled his first time up. The girls from Dixon, Illinois, are here, enjoying a ice-cold Stroh's beer. Sandy, Depp, Marsha, and Red, their note says, and a group of 50 students and staff from the alternate school in Park Forest are all here. Harry Hickey and group. Now to throw the first the runner back. Sorry to hear that the death of Charlie Sad's mother last night. Charlie's the able and popular trainer of the White Sox. Now the pitch here it is. Low. Nice play. The funeral will be held at 11 o'clock Friday morning at St. Alf St. Alphonse Church in Wheeling, West Virginia. The stretch, the pitch, and the knuckler is low. Two balls, no strikes. One one tie. Get well wishes to Liz Bumba at St. Luke's. Also to our good friend John Tom Gorn. Former. There's a pitch swing in this. Tom Gorn retired from the police force. Brother of our good friend Jack Gone. Tom's at Columbus Hospital, so we want to wish him fast recovery. Two balls and a strike. The runner back. Look where Barnes is and look where Lemon is. Barnes is playing shallow. If the ball is ever hit over second base, it might roll forever. <laughs> Lance Parrish, a right hand hitter. The people down in Evansville, Indiana will remember him. Get 25 homers playing there last year. Here's ball three low. Three balls and a strike. Greater Illinois Chapter National Hemophilia Foundation Sixth Annual All Sports Spectacular will be held at the Chicago Marriott O'Hare Wednesday night, May the 17th. Jim Enright will be the MC. All the big sports names will be on hand. Three balls and a strike. He had a cut, a fastball, and he missed it. Harry, I didn't know you could use Master Charge or Visa to buy Sox tickets. Any 
anything. Socks will make it easy for you to buy. The way we played the last couple of days. I didn't ask you that. Ah, they need some warmer weather. Three balls, two strikes. Throw over to first. Delightful today, though. There's no excuses about weather today. It's beautiful. 3-2 pitch. Here it is. Walked in. Ball four. And now here comes a nemesis of his. Aurelio Rodriguez. Between throwing over the first base a lot of times and walking guys, you're never going to beat that traffic home on a day game. <laughs> Rodriguez, the batter, he has hit two homers. Driven in eight runs, hitting 486. Manager Ralph Hauk has platooned him, along with Phil Mankowski. So it gives a good right and left hand punch at third base for the Tiger. Now to stretch the pitch. Not clearing there a strike call. Boy, that's not a good knuckleball either. It's hanging right up there. The wind blowing hard from left field, thank goodness. I would imagine it's going to be tough to hit one out in that direction. And that's where Rodriguez usually hits him. Now the pitch. Swings and he foul tips. Yeah. That knuckleball broke good. Yeah, right down and in. That was a good one. Two balls, no strikes. Two men on, two men out. Good crowd on hand, Harry, for an afternoon game. Say about 7,500 or so, maybe. The bleachers are well filled. You know, it was a shame that Mr. Beck didn't know that this was going to be a off day tomorrow for both clubs. We could have played tonight. Two strikes and nothing. Two men are out. Now the stretch. The pitch on the way. Outside. Two strikes and a ball to count. Wilbur Wood on the hill trying for his first victory of the year. Now the stretch. The pitch. He had a real good cut. He fouled it back. Wood is making his fifth start. His record is 0-3. It's one complete game, and that was a losing game. In 28 innings, he's allowed 33 hits. at 17 runs. His earned run average, 4.40. Two out, two on. Rodriguez, the batter. Over what's pitch. Here it is. See, swings, and misses. He drops the ball, picks it up, throws the first for the out to retire the side. No runs, one hit, no errors, two left. And we go to the bottom of the fourth. All tied, 1-1. One, one. Well, I remember way back in the city, and those last two balls with Mary Lou. Hanging out at the driving in my 57 Ford V8.
Kopecki from the Scrooge Brewery is here with a big group of fans. Had lunch out there in the bullpen. Follow off with the series Friday night. Tomorrow's an off day. Steve Stone is going to pitch Friday night against Dennis Martinez. Jim Palmer is going to pitch the Saturday your milk, Harry. All over You're everything. Strong. Well, all over everything, Harry. I knew that. There's a pitch bar, swings round ball to the third baseman. He's got it. Over the first for the out. Get him a blanket. One out. <laughs> what a mess, Harry. Well, I, that's boy. a win for you. <laughs> boy, Barnes hit that ball a shot. One hopper. It almost handcuffed Rodriguez. As Harry dropped the rent. <laughs> I don't mind getting all the papers wet, but I do mind. Yeah, we, we, here's another one. Losing all that cold strolls. Well, we'll uncap another one. One out, nobody on. One one tie. Come on, let's get something going. Now to wind up the pitch, here it is. Swung on, line drive to the left fielder, and Kemp's waiting for it. He has it for the out. And hey, why are you handing me all this paper? I didn't do that. I'm supposed to what? I dropped the coffee dinner at a gate, and you guys thought I committed a murder. Hey, will you just sit down and quiet, and let's talk a little baseball? Boy, you had a tough night, you're going to pick on me. It's hard not to pick on you, to be honest with you. <laughs> you're really <laughs> this, this is work. It's not supposed to be play, Jimmy. <laughs> the net, ladies and gentlemen. This is really a thrill watching this. <laughs> Two men around. Lemon the hitter. Nobody doing anything with this Morris. The pit. And it's high. Lemon, after hitting third for a few days, fell into a slump in that spot. So now he's been moved down in the batting order to six. Where he's been hitting real well. Swing! And a breaking ball and he missed it. Just as hard as you could swing, he swung at that ball. One ball, one strike. The outfield plays Lemon straight away. Now the delivery, here it is. Line smash, right stop by the second baseman. No play. A base hit for Lemon. A fine stop by Steve Dillard. Here's the pitch. Curveball of the knees. Strike three. Side three. Time. The 
this is Kurt Gowdy for your Clark Lift truck dealer. You know, although baseball is more than 135 years old, it wasn't until the game was already 30 years old that the first curveball was thrown. In 1867, a man named William A. Candy Cummings tossed that phenomenon to the surprise of the batter who was facing him at the time. And we've got an equally surprising phenomenon for users of forklift trucks. There's a strong competitor to a Clark lift truck that costs about half as much. This lift truck can deliver thousands of hours of reliable service. Clark's strongest competitor, a used Clark. To find out more about this phenomenon, see your Clark dealer today. Tell him Kurt Gowdy sent you, and you want a straight pitch on used lift trucks. See your Clark Lift of Chicago dealer for the lift truck savings that are straight down the middle. That's Clark Lift of Chicago, the lift truck people. Hi, everybody. I'm Jimmy Pearsall for Emory Air Freight. Emory doesn't just go to major cities. They also go to the miners. Larry Kelly and Jimmy Pearsall are going down to the top of the fifth inning. And leading it off will be their shortstop, Mark Wagner. Well, they've got two flag young shortstop. This Wagner... Is fighting it out for Alan Trammell, the 20 year old rookie. Here's a pitch a little bit low. And there's nothing wrong with this Wagner either. So no matter who they use, they're in good shape for shortstop. Here's a knuckleball in there for a strike call. Gets out of a low crouch to the pitch. Swings and he misses. Two strikes and a ball. A windy day, bright sunshine. So I'm going to put the net back here. It's blowing from one end to the other. Now the delivery. Didn't mean to swing a little tap back to the pitch, and that'll be an easy out. One gone. And he was around the floor. He walked and scored a run in the first inning. LaFleur, this for the Tigers. It is their 15th game of the year. LaFleur has already scored 19 runs. He's averaged one run, more than one run per game play. Scoring. Last three games, he scored a run each game. One out, nobody on. One ball, no strikes. Now they wind up the pitch. Here it is. And low and inside. Ball two. Two balls, no strikes. The floor. Who scored the run in the first inning after base on balls. Now the delivery. Here it is. High outside. Wilberwood should have a one to nothing lead right now. Instead, it's tied up 1-1. Three balls, no strikes on the floor. And boy, when he gets on, the game starts. Here's the pitch. Right down the middle of fastball. He walked twice and was hit by a pitch ball yesterday. Had two, two base hits the other day. Now the pitch. Well, he's held up in time, ball four. He started a swing, but he held up in time. better than two times per game. And when your leadoff man is on two times a game, the rest of your batting order has got the chance to do something with him. Here's Steve Dillard. Throw the first, the runner back. One, one, tie. Beautiful sunshine. The crowd in the center field bleachers must be perfect out there. There goes the runner, swung and foul tip. And boy, I'm glad he swung. <laughs> it looked to me like the floor had a great jump on first base. He could have slid into the left field wall safely. <laughs> I don't think there's any right-hand hitter in baseball runs faster than the floor. When you figure that the left-hand hitter has a... If he were batting left-handed, you'd never throw him out on a ground ball. But that other step to his advantage. Reminds you of Gil Cohen. 
years ago for Washington Senators. Was he right hand in it? Yeah. He had something like 57 infield hits. One strike to nothing. Here's the throw to first, the runner back. One out, one on. Fifth inning. The score tied 1-1. One, one. Now Wilbur Wood throws over there again. Woody hoping he can catch him breaking the wrong way, which frequently happens. Wood the best on the White Sox for holding a runner close. There goes the runner. Again, the batter swings and fouls it off. He got him that time. He did not get a good jump. He might have had a little trouble with the pitch because it was low. Oh, yeah. He had a tough time catching that ball. You know, when you say Wilbur's got a great pickoff, well, he's averaged about 12 a year or all during his career. Some guys don't have 12 their whole career. He has a knack of uh, only something in reserve. He'll show you that pickoff. And that's when, just when you think you've got him red, he goes in a high gear with one. They call it the cheating move. Two strikes and nothing. Again, he throws over there. Out of a dull ball game, not a whole lot has happened. But it will. We're in the top of the fifth. Now the pitch. That throws over to first instead. Boy, a nice crowd out there in the center field bleachers. Yeah, some of the fellows with uh, radios out there. Getting a tan while they watch the game. A little tap. The only play first base. Oh. Boy, it looked like Sarah Snow was going to go over Omar. <laughs> he could have yeah. been It's so... Two men are gone now, and the floor is in scoring position. And here's Rusty Stop. He ruined Wilbur Wood in Detroit with a grand slam as the White Sox were beaten 10-9. to nine. He didn't help us last night either. He hit the three-run over in the 10th on him. Hit- Made it eight to four, which is the way it ended. Now the pitch, high fly ball, sharp center field. Here comes Lemon on the run, makes the count. The retire other side. The runs, no hits, no errors. One left, and we go into the bottom of the fifth inning. It's all tied up at one. Hour Celadon with all those good Chevy values like Monte Carlo, Malibu, Caprice, Honda, Duff Chevy pickups and vans. Put a brand new Chevy in your life. It's a giant Chevy Celadon. Atlanta's number one Chevy dealer. Put a brand new Chevy in your life. It three days only, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, April 26th, 27th, and 28th, at participating Chevrolet dealers from coast to coast. Chevy's have to sell thousands of cars and trucks during this special event. So come on in during the giant Chevy 72 hour telethon. That's right. Come on in during Chevy's giant 72 hour telethon. Sun up to sundown, April 26th through the 28th. It's a 72 hour Tied up 1 1. The White Sox have made only three hits. And the Detroit Tigers have made only three hits. The White Sox should be leading 1 0 with two out and the runner at third. Jason Thompson had a routine ground ball to order in the first inning. Who kicked the ball for an error to run scoring? And that's the only run they made. The White Sox got their run in the second. When Johnson led off with a single to center, was sacrificed to second by Lemon and scored with Satterholm single to left. Now here's Naharatney to lead it off. Right hand batter digging in. Tomorrow's an off day, and on Friday night, the Baltimore Orioles will be here. Up the pitch on the way, here it is. Swung and a high pop foul. The wind might take it out of play. Harry's chasing it, no play. 
one strike to nothing. St. Louis leading Montreal two to nothing at the end of four. And Parrish threw off his mask and hat. He's a good looking guy. Just 21 years old. Wilbur Wood trying for his first victory of the year. Is going to pitch Friday night against right hander Dennis Martinez for Baltimore. Jim Palmer is scheduled to pitch Saturday night. Here's the pitch foul back. Out of play. Saturday night, by the way, will be teen night. Will all teenagers admit it for half price? The series ends with a 115 game Sunday. Now to wind up the pitch. Curveball low outside. Rodney using that 36, 36 ounce bat. They're going to have to say, hey, I'm going to play a lot and I'm going to get a little tired. I better get a lighter bat. He was well behind uh, two fastballs right down the middle. And now the catcher, Lance Parrish, is out talking with Jack Barnes. Parrish is just about as tall as Barnes. Here's the pitch, and it's inside. 
Tennessee. 0 for 2 today. 0 for 4 last night. 0 for 4 the night before. That's 0 for 10. Yeah, nothing out of 13 so far. Held up on a curveball. High outside. Ball two. Two balls and a strike. One out, one on. get a chance I'd like to try to explain a little more about uh, rap what his problem was over there there's the stretch the pitch double play ball shortstop steps on second throws the first and Dawes is over his last 14 as he rolls into a double play 6-3 no runs no hits no errors nobody left at the end of five, we're still tied at one. Take the back-breaking drudgery out of garden preparation with a ground-breaking power tool from True Value Hardware Stores. Hi, Pat Summer also suggests True Test heavy-duty power tillers to help you do the hardest work in a garden, tilling and cultivating the soil. For example, the True Test 5-horsepower chain drive tiller features 16 bolo tines that till, cultivate, and break up the soil for you. Plus, the power reverse instant wheel adjusters and pivoting depth control make the power tiller easy to operate. Or for smaller gardens, True Value Hardware Stores offer their True Test 2 horsepower chain drive tiller. It's lightweight and compact. The eight double end slasher times adjust for controlled power tilling. And the handle folds for easy transporting and storing. Take the back breaking drudgery out of garden preparation with a ground breaking True Test power tiller. They're sold exclusively at participating True Value hardware stores. Remember True Value, more than just a name, it's their way of doing business. Harry Carey back to the ballpark. We're going now to the top of the sixth inning. Jason Thompson's going to lead it off. on the players, no discipline, controls, and Vern Rapp tried to come in and be absolutely the opposite, and you just can't go from one radical extreme to the other, here's Thompson, there's a strike call, some of the players I talked to during the winter down there were of the opinion that he just sort of eased into this rigid discipline, he would have fared better. There's a bouncing ball to the right or top. Can't come up with it. And Thompson is safe. What are they going to call that? The ball was not hit hard. They're going to, they call it a hit. Crowd will boo when they put that up there. I maybe would have had trouble throwing him out anyway. The ball was bounced medium speed to his right. So Thompson is on. With an infield hit, and here's Steve Kemp. He popped up and he rolled out. Now the stretch. Throw over the first to run it back. Game tied, 1-1, one, one, we're in the sixth. Here it is. High outside. Ball one. One ball, no strikes. Game tied, 1-1. One, one. Top of the sixth. Tigers have a good start here on a scratch hit. Throw to first base on the runner back. Left hand hitter digging in. Two balls, no strikes. 
Kemp, the batter. We're in the sixth inning. There's the lead by Thompson. Now the pitch. There's a strike call. Up the inside corner. Wood got a break there. And Kemp is arguing about it. Two balls and a strike. Kemp, a stockily built left-hand hitter. The University of Southern California. To throw to first, the runner back. St. Louis leading Montreal four to nothing in the fifth. On the stretch, the pitch into the dirt. Ball three. Three balls and a strike. In the field bleacher. Not a bad turnout for an afternoon game. Beautiful afternoon in Chicago. Here's the pitch that goes runner. A bouncing ball to Orta. The only play first base. And Thompson is advanced. So they have a man in scoring position with one away. And here's Charlie Spikes. out in singles so far in the game. The lead run is in scoring position. One out. Ball game of the sixth. Now the stretch, the hesitation, the pitch. Here it is. Swung on and smashed. Great stop by Pryor. He's got the man hung up. Between second and third. Soderholm. Stretch. 
The pitch. There's a smash. Base hit. The run is in. That is two to one in favor of the Tigers. The both runs are unearned. Every time we make a bad play or make a mistake, boy, they kill us. There's no excuse for somebody in a rundown, especially like Thompson. He's not fast. He's just a mediocre runner.
the wind up the pitch. Here it is. Fastball in there, a strike call. They wonder about the young players getting another experience. Well, they learn to come from behind as much as they've done all year, including against Texas. Used with two are awfully fast. Now the pitch swung on and a bouncing ball foul. I bet it's an interesting story here because in a day and age when nobody even thinks about developing their own ball players, here's the strike. So old fashioned <laughs> that it's doing it with players from their farm system. They developed the ball, Perry, the catcher, Morris, the pitcher, Thompson, the first baseman. There's a little roller. Easy out to Jason Cox. Purple the ball, picks it up, and touches the bag with his glove to the out. Two gone. Two men up, two men down. And here's Bobby Bonds, something out of two, although he's hit the ball hard twice. They got a shortstop in second base when they developed. Two shortstops. Rodriguez was obtained in a trade, but Mankowski, the other third base when they developed. Kemp is their own. LaFleur, their own. Spikes, they got in a deal. And, and Staub, they got in a deal. Phil Beck inherited a franchise without a minor league system to speak of, and now he's trying to develop it. Here's Bobby Bond. Swings, and he fouls it. Strike and nothing. Two men are out. Ball game of the six. Here's the one. There's a liner in the center field. I'll bet you he tried to steal a second. That'll bring up Lamar Johnson. Lamar is one out of two. Now Bobby Bond, here's a spot. If he gets a chance, you know he's going to try to steal second base. The Angels shut out Seattle last night, three to nothing. If Ryan won a game, he's been striking out 15 guys and can't get a win. Yeah, I think he's one one. Just snap one last night. Here's a pitch out, nobody going anywhere. Over to 
television is still here at the end of six remains. Detroit two, the White Sox one. WMAQ with a thousand dollar an hour secret serial number. Each secret serial number contains two letters and eight numbers. It begins with a letter, ends with a letter. Keep listening and we'll give you clues to help you win. Just be the correct number caller each hour and you'll have a chance to guess the secret serial number. Guess the entire secret serial number in order and you'll win a thousand dollars cash. Another clue and another chance to guess the secret serial number and win one thousand dollars happens again at any moment from your radio station, WMAQ. We hope you'll join us at Comiskey Park for a special edition of the Mary Francis and Friends Show on Sunday morning, May 14th at 10 a.m. Join Mary Francis and friend Bill Veck for questions, answers, and great conversation, the Sox Mother's Day brunch, and a great ball game with the Milwaukee Brewers. Tickets for the brunch and ball game may be ordered by calling 924-1000. Ask for George and the details on the Mother's Day special. And if you can't make it, don't miss it. Sunday, May 14th, Mary Francis and friend at 10 on your radio station, WMAQ. The work, Lord Brown and Jimmy Pearsall back at Comiskey Park as we go to the seventh inning. The Tigers with two unearned runs out in front of the White Sox here, two to one.
as of yesterday. Here's the toss over to first. You think what I said? A little bat boy for the Tigers looks like Eddie Goodell. <laughs> Must be about three feet five. Tiger uniform. Here's the pitch. job behind the plate today. The knuckleball to me has got to be the toughest thing for an umpire to call. And he stands directly behind the plate, which gives him a better view of it. Two to one, Detroit out in front. Still at the top of the seventh, runner at first and one out. Here's the toss over there and the runner back. Both the Tigers and the White Sox off tomorrow. Tigers head to the West Coast, the White Sox. Baltimore, Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday afternoon. Here's the first, the runner back. When's Palmer going? Palmer will probably go, I would think, on Sunday. He went last night and got beat. They're off today. We're thinking their rotation, but he would probably be going Sunday afternoon. Possibly Saturday night. Left-hander delivers. Here's the pitch high and inside of all. Oftentimes, uh, Earl Weaver, more than any other manager, will move that, rotate that pitching staff around instead of leaving it the way it is. Lamar Johnson has it. His only play is to first. As Staub advances the runner on the hit and run. They didn't get the hit, but the runner moved up to second base in the scoring position of his two outs. Wait, Staub's run. They have to put the hit and run on because Lamar could have ran down the second and ran all the way back to first by the time he got there. He does not run well. Well, Jason Thompson, the batter. Once for three today. He has been the man who has gotten on and stayed on by two errors that have brought home runs. Officially one for three with a run scored. And you're at two with WMAQ Radio, Chicago, Illinois. I invite you to keep your socks on, WMAQ, all year. Good, good, I like it. Not original, I got it from the Boston Red Sox. <laughs> got to admit it, Jimmy. Here's the pitch, but I like it. It's good. No, what the heck? Boy, cool. Stripes, too. Boy, you look really sharp today, my friend. Look at that time. Fine, fine. Change our luck. Dress up for a change, right? <laughs> Here's the pitch. And it's outside of all. The way you're dressed, you're going to do my show. <laughs> I thought you were say go to court. <laughs> no. I did get stopped last night by a nice officer. The Grange. Let me talk it out of it. <laughs> Where'd you get stopped? Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. Outside of all. I'll never tell. <laughs> you know, it makes me mad every time I get stopped, the cops right. Yeah, they are. I got stopped in the Grange a couple of times. A good police from there. And they were right, too. This is on a side street in a small town. Here's a 2 1 pitch. In the dirt of all, 3 and 1. I just been around towns where they. I have never been stopped when the police was wrong. They think they're wrong at the time they stop you, but it's But I never reality. caught this 20 mile an hour by a school. Is it a fact like 3 in the morning? <laughs> I was up till 3 in the morning last night, but listen to the Oakland Athletics with a double header. Not I. Here's a 3 1 pitch. Swing and a miss. And doing those statistics on Ron LaFleur getting on base against the White Sox. Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> I was holding hands. The runner at second, two out here in the seventh. Wilbur Wood ready. Here's the pitch. Swing and a grounder right side. Stays fair. Lamar Johnson has it. Steps on the bag and retires Jason Thompson. And the Tigers in the seventh. No run. One hit. One left. Let's go to Harry Carey here in the bottom of the seventh as the Tigers lead it 2-1. Oh, Harry
yet. All you have to do is when your phone rings, pick it up and say, WMAQ is going to make me rich. If it's us cash calling you, you win $10,000. We could be calling you soon, so be expecting our call. No question, just one phrase. WMAQ is going to make me rich. Say it, win $10,000 cash from your radio station, WMAQ. Hi, everybody. I'm Jimmy Pearsall for Emory Air Freight. If you have a package to deliver, you got to be crazy not to use Emory. Lloyd Brown and Jimmy Pearsall back at Comiskey Park as we go to the bottom of the seventh. It'll be Seth Lovett, Eric Stoddard holding Bill Maharotney in the batter. Tigers out in front here by a score of 2-1. Look at Scott Ryan. Rodriguez is really guarding the line and way back. Ted foot of the ball down the third base line. Get Crawford, a left-hander, and Steve Bookall, the right-hander of the Tiger Bullpen. And as the pitch was delivered low and away, Rodriguez crouched over and came in a couple of steps. But he's still, the way Lemon can punt and run in an infield grass is very slow. Here's the 1-0 pitch to Chet, a swing and a miss. Chet has sacrificed and singled. And two trips, one for one officially. Sacrifice put Lamar Johnson at second where Soderholm singled him home. Two to one, the Tigers are out in front. Well, I'll tell you, Jimmy, when you're not hitting, mistakes are magnified as a breaking ball caught the outside part of the plate for a strike one and two. White Sox has really not put a big inning together. This is Toronto when they got 11 runs that afternoon. Right-hander in the windup. Here's the one-two pitch to Lemon. Here's a swing and a shot with a short stop right at it. We get a high breaking ball. So Lemon lines out to the short stop, and the batter is Eric Soderholm. Soderholm one for two, an RBI single that's accounted for the only White Sox run of the afternoon. Eric also charged with an air. Runner came home to the second with the lead run. Here's a pitch to him, a swing and a miss on a fastball. Primarily fastball and changeup pitcher. <laughs> Giving up only four hits here this afternoon. Here's a breaking ball, swing and a fly ball. Deep to left field. This might be gone. Something on it. Usually you like to see a guy take a little step, but 
he's developed it all right. As long as you get the job done, you can do it any way you want. But if you don't, then they start saying, well, you should do it this way. Greg Pryor the batter now with nobody on and two out. Pryor is grounded out to short, and he is walked in two trips. Officially 0 for 1. Right-hander to the lineup, and the first pitch to Pryor is a fastball for a strike. Both clubs with two runs on five hits. Here's the pitch, a swing and a foul, but the White Sox is... Two errors today, accounting for the two Tiger runs. White Sox in the last season and a month into this year. That young man played hooky from school, and that ball hit him in the hands, and now his mother's going to know because his hands all fall up. Here's a swing and a foul to the right side. Did he get the ball for his effort? Did you ever play hooky from school, Lauren? Oh, oh, I played oh, hooky. Did you play hooky from school? at the Harper Avenue Boys Club is right above the police station. I take it into that station a couple times for a look. Here's the pitch. Half swing and a grounder down to second. He's got it. Throws over to first to get fire in the White Sox for seven. But the White Sox tie it up here with Eric Soderholm's third home run of the year. One run, one hit, nobody left on. We're at the end of seven at Comiskey Park. The White Sox two, the Tigers two. <laughs> With all those good Chevy values, like Monte Carlo, Malibu, Capri, Honda, Tough Chevy, pickups and vans. It lasts three days only, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, April 26th, 27th, and 28th, at participating Chevrolet dealers from coast to coast. Chevy's have to sell thousands of cars and trucks during this special event. So come on in during the giant Chevy 72-hour telethon. That's right. Come on in during Chevy's Giant 72-hour telethon. Run up to sundown, April 26th through the 28th. It's a 72-hour
Clippers one out, and Charlie Spikes the batter. Spikes one for three, a single.
victory this year coming against Toronto. He beat fellow Chicago and Jim Clancy that afternoon, 4-3. to three. And they're waiting for the kids in the left center area to pull the banner in. White Sox and Major League do not mind banners, but not when the game is going on. Now they get it in and we resume play. One ball, one strike to Nordhagen. He'll be followed by Molinaro and Orta. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch. And it's low. Might have a pinch hitter for Molinaro. But if we look down, he's in the on deck circle along with Orta. Two to two, we're all tied up. Here at the bottom of the eighth. Looking ahead to the Tiger ninth, they'll have their eight, nine, and one hitters up. Here's the pitch. Swing and a chopper to the shortstop, Wagner. He has it. Throws high, and they missed him. Jason Thompson missed. Stuart Hagen, he is safe. Tigers, well, Paul's coming out to argue about it. Lance Parrish also arguing. The ball was high by Wagner. Thompson came down, did not touch the bag, reached out to touch Nordhagen and missed him. So a break for the White Sox. As the Tigers come in an air here, charge to Wagner, the shortstop. Coming up to pinch hit for Bob Molinaro. Molinaro 0 for 3 today. Alan Bannister batting for the third time this year. Alan 0 for 2. That's funny, out in left field, they've got a sign 0 for the long one. Alan's only hit three home runs in his life. Got a hope for it. Here is a base hit. Try to get that runner in scoring position. He might be sacrificing, and he takes a strike. Shortened up as if the punt, but took the strike and looks down to Bobby Canop for the sign. Rodriguez is charging in from third, and Thompson charging in from first. A runner at first, the lead run with nobody out. Crawford working out of the stretch. Here's the pitch. Inside, gets away from the catcher. Here goes the runner to second. Went right through his feet. Bannister was ready to bunt, but he got out of the way on the inside pitch. And went right between the legs of the catcher. And the White Sox have a runner at second and nobody out. It's a pass ball charged to Lance Parrish. So an air and a pass ball have started the turn of the worm. The White Sox getting a couple of breaks. Crawford out of the stretch. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch. Inside of all, 2-1. Two St. Louis 10, Montreal nothing at the end of six. Ready. Looks back to second. Here's the 2 1 pitch. Swing and a foul back to the screen. Evens up the count now at two balls and two strikes. Infield playing back. So maybe Bannister might try to bunt his way on and get the runner to third in that last pitch. He's got good speed. With that infield, everybody back. He could well have beaten it out, but he elected to turn away, and the count is even. Two balls and two strikes. Crawford puts his back foot on the rubber. Here's the pitch. Here's a swing and a foul. Sliced off the right side and to the upper deck. Off a fan's hand with the glove. Had a pair of gloves on, but still could not hang on to it. Tigers got an unearned run of the first. White Sox. Lead-off single by Lamar Johnson, sacrificed by Levin, and a single by Soderholm tied it up. Tigers got an unearned run in the sixth, but Soderholm hit a homer in the seventh to tie it up. 2-2 two -two pitch way outside of all. Three balls and two strikes. But here in the eighth, the White Sox with a big break. An air and a pass ball. Have a runner at second base with nobody out of the count now to Bannister. Three balls and two strikes. 
looking for his first hit of the year. This is only his third time at the plate. Crawford ready. So 3-2 pitch. Swing and a grounder foul. Protecting the plate that pitch just on the inside part of the plate. And we'll do it again. White Sox trying to snap a four-game losing streak. Crawford ready. A 3-2 pitch. Swing and a foul back to the screen. Reached up after a pitch up around the letters. Maybe a little higher. Fouls it straight back. Both clubs with five hits. White Sox have committed two errors. The Tigers committed one here in this inning. Crawford ready. Bannister waits. The 3 2 pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. one out. That's the first strikeout by the Tigers staff today. And the batter is George Orta. Orta has been hit by a pitch. He is flying out to right and he is grounded out to first. So George, 0 for 2. Manager Ralph Houck batting, batting on the base of the dugout, yelling out to his pitcher. He's got a right-hander, Foucault, down to the bullpen. Chances are this will probably be the last man that Crawford with, will face with a host of right-handers due up next. And the first pitch to order is a strike with a fastball. Get Bonds, Johnson, Levin, and Sauter home, and now Harodney and Fire, all right-handed hitters. You don't expect, here's the pitch to order, low of all. You don't expect Bonds, Johnson, or Levin, or Sauter home to be looking for pitch hitters. One ball, one strike. A runner at second, one out. White Sox have been given a great opportunity here in this inning. Let's see if they can cash in. Crawford ready. Here's the pitch. Outside of all. Two balls and a strike to order. An air and a pass ball. And a runner at second with nobody out. He is now there with one out. Crawford ready. Here's the 2-1 pitch. There's a swing and a loop box to the drop for a base hit. Here comes the runner around third. He's going to score. The White Sox take the lead. Horn is going to second on the throw in. And the White Sox lead it. Frank, that's going to be all for Crawford. He got his pitch where he wanted on the inside part of the plate. But Horn muscled it to left center. Looked it in for a single. Crawford kicks that the dirty. He's a little upset. Year 
loss of the Tigers. He is without a record. In five innings, he's allowed only one earned run on five hits. He's walked none and struck out two and has an earned run average of 1.80. It's the first time that he has faced the White Sox this year. And the first man that he faces is Bobby Bond. Well, the floor helped out by trying to get the runner at the plate when there was no chance at all to get him. And the ball was way off the mark. They're going to walk Bobby Bonds intentionally to set up a force out at any base but the plate. Well, that runner's at first and second with one out. Here's the first one outside, ball one. Nordhagen loosening up down the left field line. He'll go into play left field for Ralph Yar. That's ball two outside. Here's ball three. And now, ball four. So Bobby Bonds intentionally walked. Second walk given to the White Sox today. So the Tigers play the percentages for a fourth out and either third or second or playing the runner. Plus the fact they get the veteran Bobby Bond out of the batter's box and put Lamar Johnson up there. So Lamar, not as experienced as Bobby, but certainly as capable of a hitter. Though he doesn't hit the long ball as often as Bond does during his career. Ready. Here's the pitch to Lamar Johnson, and it's a fastball for a strike. Lamar with a single and three trips scored the White Sox first run back in the second inning after leading it off with a single. Three to two, the White Sox out in front. Who called ready? Here's the pitch. Half swing and a grounder right back to the mound. Hitcher can't get it. The bases are loaded. It went under Who called glove, and the shortstop would move towards second, had no chance. Big break for the Sox. It goes as a hit. And the bases are loaded. Book called now. They're going to give it an error. I would think so. He had a chance to get it. First they had a hit up there, but it's an error. Here's 
the pitch. There's a swing and a pop-up on the infield. Shortstop waiting for it. Has it. And there are two down. So there are two out. And the batter will be Bill Naharazi. Let's see. I don't believe any of these runs are earned. The first one certainly wasn't. Sure, if they're not going to run her at first, but that ends the inning. And 
the White Sox and head them to the plate. They come up with five runs on a total of three hits. There were two errors in the inning by the Tigers and two men left on. So we go to the ninth. It's the White Sox seven, Detroit two. There are two things I remember about 58. I spent more on oil from my hair than on oil from a car. And it's on the first shade you. Started using champions. Now in '66, I remember two more things: a silver Corvette and a redhead named George Ed. This year, I got myself a Chevy wagon. Four more things to remember: Billy Jean, Billy Joe, Billy Jean, and Billy Bob. I've had a lot of different kinds of Chevys over the years, but one kind of spark plug champion. Tied the ball game up. 
a big break for the Tigers. Here's the one-two pitch. Here's a swing and a one-hopper right back to the mound. Woody holds the runner in second, and he throws him out. So Walker Fuss is retired. And then here today in the eighth inning, Wagner's high throw pulled Thompson off the bag. He got down, but not on the bag, and reached to tag Nordig, and the umpire said he missed him. Now, that was a big break for the White Sox, but opened the gates to five runs being scored. Four of the batter, he's been on base three times today with two walks and an infield hit in four trips. Officially, he's one for two. Swings and hits the grounder up the middle. Prior to his left, has a throw, got it. Oh, boy. Ever so effortlessly. Greg Pryor, just drifting to his left, throws him out, and there's two out. So two down, and Steve Dillard, the batter. Dillard 0 for four today. White Sox, one out away of beating the Tigers for the first time this year. After Detroit had won three straight. Tigers with two unearned runs. The White Sox with five unearned runs. Seven to two. White Sox out in front. Here's a knuckle ball for a strike in the inside part of the plate. This will lower the team earned run average considerably. Was it 4.39? Here's a and a knuckle ball, strike two. So we're down to a strike. A runner at second, two out, top of the ninth, White Sox out in front, seven to two. Before some 7,983 here today. Here's the pitch. Cool strike three, struck him out, the ball game is over. And Wilbur Wood pitches the first to...